Uh, his clothes, his uh, his badges, his medals, the pomp and splendor of his class, being part of the royal family. He was a very vain man, and I wanted to show that. That was part of his thing. He was more excited about introducing the zipper, you know, to, <laughs> to India. And um, whereas she was his conscience, she w constantly was saying to him, don't rush, don't rush what you're doing. Wait, wait, don't just go for partition. Wait, wait. So I think that um, also there's a lot of footage of Edwina out in India. He remained a lot, w you know, in uh, Viceroy's house in Rashtrapati Bhavan meeting, uh, you know, Nehruji, Gandhiji, everybody. But Edwina, she was out with the Red Cross. Uh, she was a patron of the Red Cross. She would go and visit villages. She would go to Gandhi's prayer meetings. You know, she was out and about in India, and she actually really did want to make changes here. Um, she took that role very seriously. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show that, you know, and the all the footage is there on, the on YouTube to see her uh, out there with refugees, with people, you know, just not really able to do anything, but just to show that hamdardi, you know. Mm -hmm. She very much wanted to do that, and, uh, and I salute her for doing that, actually. But I think that her husband really... Um, didn't really listen to her, and um, and he just sort of went down a different path. Uh, Ma'am, दूसरा सवाल ये है क्या आपको लगता है partition टाला जा सकता था? It can be avoided. Um, मुझको ये अफसोस है जब वो टाइम में अभी वो top secret documents देने मैंने देखे हैं British Library में अभी है कोई भी देख सकता है जे नेहरू जी और गांधी जी और पटेल जी वो लोग जो उन्होंने वो डॉक्यूमेंट्स देखे थे ना उस वक्त में मुझको लगता है हिंदुस्तान का अलग हिस्ट्री होनी होनी चाहिए थी बिकॉज आई थिंक दे वॉज सो आफ्टर थ्री हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ ब्रिटिश रूल दे वर वेरी मच कंसर्न विद इंडिया एंड इंडियाज इंडिपेंडेंस क्वाइट राइटली यू नो दे हैड फोर्ट very hard, a terrible struggle against British oppression for independence. And so they were just thinking about these borders and India. Whereas Britain, who was used to ruling the world, was thinking about a bigger global scenario. If India becomes independent, what's going to happen to our place mm. in the rest of the world? So I think of Sorsky Bata, that I think the Indian leaders never really thought about the global situation just about Hindustan. And I think these top secret documents show that uh, what the British agenda was and that the Indian leaders didn't realize how uh, cunning they were in, uh, in, ga in uh, pushing uh, the Indian politicians into one direction, whereas they had a completely different agenda. Uh. Apart from this, uh, if you can tell us a little more about your character in the film, so whether you are in, in GDA or in Gangs of Basipur or Bandarpur, where you have to do your own modules, what do you think about your own modules? You said yes to the film. तफसील में बताऊँ तो मैं उस वक्त मैंने स्क्रिप्ट पढ़ी थी और एक ऑडिशन टेप भेजा था गुरिंदर को हिंदुस्तान से सहर लतीफ कास्टिंग डायरेक्टर हैं उनने मुझे कॉल किया बोला फिल्म बन रही है मेरे घर आई हमने एक ऑडिशन टेप रिकॉर्ड किया जहाँ मैं कुछ दुपट्टा वपट्टा सुखा रही हूँ एंड आई सेंड टू गुरिंदर एंड आई थिंक गुरिंदर री लाइक इट एंड उस तब को इंसिडेंटली मैं उसके कुछ टाइम बाद आई वॉज इन इंग्लैंड वन आई गोट अ कॉल से नो गुरिंदर वॉन्ट्स टू टेस्ट यू विथ Manish Dayal, the actor who's in the film with me, opposite me, uh, who's a wonderful, wonderful actor. But uh, so I said, "Meto, magar uh, Hindustan me hui niu, meto England me hu." So then she got us in touch, and then I went to see her musical, and then we did like a reading together uh, with uh, Manish, uh, another actor from the film Jazz and I, which I think went well. Very well. And uh, then she called me one day. I was sleeping, and she called and saying, "Okay, I want you to be my Alia." And I think I screamed for five minutes, and she's <laughs> like, she laughed. She said, "Okay, maybe it's the wrong decision." But no, it's but also um, she has a peri period face, period features. You know, in the film she has a 
40s hairstyle and wears those big, big salvars and kuli kameez. And so she, shoot, she really suits the period look. That's important yeah. to say. And it's a lovely script, like I said. You know, it's, uh, each character is so beautifully written. History is very different from the history. When we make a film in the partition, it's very different from the history. It's very different from the history. It's very different from the history. Uh, of course, एक uh, जो secret documents की बात कर रही है वो तो है ही मतलब that's the basic crux of the film but उसके अलावा uh, partition को एक people's problem बताया गया है बहुत आसान होता है कि आप finger point करो और किसी को blame करो but to really think that it's a collective problem and how that that an issue like this affects common people I think वो कहीं ना कहीं निकल के आ रहा था which I sort of you know as a person also I sort of resonate with that that whatever could be your ulterior motive it could be geopolitical it could be anything but to divide people uh, you know and to and to uh, cause unrest or bloodshed is just not right you know so I, I I just love that and I knew when I read the film that I would love to be a part of a film like this oh uh, good about Alia, well, Alia is a Muslim interpreter uh, to the uh, to the Mountbatten's. If come, she's educated. She's Muslim, which is very unusual for a girl uh, for that period. Very strong. She, her problem uh, is sort of the problem um, that India had, or a lot of Muslims in India had that point in time, whether to stay or to leave. And she's in love with this boy who's who's Hindu, and she has a blind father to take care of. And and the father's found this lovely young Muslim boy for her played by the lovely dashing Arunodhya Singh, who, uh, who's a great guy, uh, but she's just not in love with him, and she has to make that choice whether to stay or to leave. But we also hmm. made it that Alia uh, and Jeet, one was from Amritsar, one was from Lahore, so you never, they never knew which country they were going to end up in until the last minute. So that was a... Uh, which is the problem of all Indians, no? You yeah. could be in Lahore, but you could be a Hindu, and then you didn't know which side you want to be on, because Lahore was still your city, and... So it was it was just that that conflict that people had at that point in time, you know, who you really are, that question of identity when something like this is thrown in your face. I guess people just respond. When we were making the film, in, when we were shooting the refugee scenes, uh, we had many extras who had come because actually in Jodhpur, we, we're not too far from the border, right? So we had a lot of uh, people who were coming as extras and there are scenes with uh, Mount Batten in the camp where there are real refugees and he's talking to them just while the camera's on and they start telling him about their real experiences, what happened to them, how they escaped with their lives because their Muslim neighbors put burqas on them, got them to on the railway, got them across the border. And so all this started happening for real on the film. But also, uh, when we were shooting the, the, those refugee scenes, it was terribly upsetting because we had a thousand extras and every day we were dressing them to look like period, you know, 1947 refugees. But on our phones, we were seeing the news, which was, the main news at that time was the little Syrian boy who was found washed up on the beach um, as his family were trying to escape Syria. So we were looking at refugees on our phone on the news and we were shooting period refugees here and it really made uh, the film feel very urgent. Um, and um, I think that... Um, I was going to say something. There's a lady uh, uh, here. Yeah, there's a lady yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hi. Hi, Uma. So basically my question is, this is more like an Indo-British film, you know, you have started doing that. So can we expect you to also join, you know, the Hollywood League and, you know, sign some movies out there? Well, I've never chased a Hollywood or a particular industry. I think wherever uh, I chase creativity, I chase good scripts. Uh, I'm doing a Tamil film as we speak right now. So for me, language is not really... Uh, the concern. I mean, I don't choose scripts based on what language or what territory is going to release in. I think, uh, you know, if Gurinder had made this film in Punjabi, I would still love to be a part of it. Uh, so yeah, if there's a good script, no matter which part of the world it is in, I would I would be up for it, most uh, definitely. Just Hi. one, okay. one added thing. Uh, you are also a part of, uh, you know, doing the Rajnikanth film. If you could just tell us what's your role and, you know, how... I think let's keep it to Partition 947. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll do another press conference for that. Gurinder, I have a question for you. Just this lady here. Well, I think f all filmmaking is a risk. 
you know, anyone who's trying to say something different, it's always a risk as a filmmaker, but you have to follow your heart and you have to say what you think, you know, that's what artists do. Um, I want to tell you that it, my editor in England, uh, Val Valeria, he was Italian, and when we were cutting the film, you know, all the, every cut, you know, he, when we screened it for the producers, he would always cry at the end, you know, as an Italian, he was very emotional. And he would always cry, and whenever I wanted to keep something in that I knew would be more appealing to the Indian side of me, he was my biggest defender against people who would say, oh no, it's too emotional, it's too emotional. And I said, no, no, I want this, I want this sequence, I want to do this one. So Valeria was there with me throughout that. But then, when we were halfway through editing, Brexit happened, and suddenly he became a refugee, because he didn't know if he was gonna stay in England, or he had a wife, Two, English wife, two children. He didn't know if he had to stay or go to Italy. At the same time, we saw rate, a rise in hate crime. You know, suddenly immigrants were being blamed for problems, you know, because of the rise of the right. You had the rise of the right in uh, Le Pen, in France, in Germany, you know. Uh, it was a very tricky time when we were editing the film. So I think that this rise of the right, wherever you are, you know, um, Ultimately, you know, you, one has to stand up for what is right. Now, this is a nation that is built on the philosophies of Gandhi, Gandhiji, you know. And when I watched the film back, uh, the first time I watched the finished film back, I sat in the cinema, uh, in, in the screening room, and I turned to Paul, my husband, and I said, you know what, there's two people from the past who I think would really appreciate the film. And one is Gandhiji, you know, it's his philosophy, the film. And the second one is Guru Nanak Dev Ji, you know, who says, before you see yourself as a, a Hindu or a Sikh or a Muslim, see yourself as a human. So for me, that wherever I went, these two, Gandhiji and Guru Nanak Dev Ji, are with me. They're on either side of me. And I think that is the reason why I was able to make the film, because I kept going back to them.